So I'll start with reading the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 23rd of March, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. Uh, we uh, operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas <coughs> are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes uh, a, a hearing for a notice of intent, a continuation uh, for a notice of intent for storm drain repair, uh, installation of new drainage pipe, cask basins, slope stabilization, and walking path replacement all along the uh, Mill River um, below Dryads Green. Uh, we also will have an executive session to consider purchase exchange lease or value of real estate uh, and uh, a, a couple of other administrative matters about open space updates and so forth. Uh, so we'll start with seeing if there's any public comment uh, not having to do with a specific case before us tonight. <laughs> And if not, uh, then Sarah sent out a set of minutes from way back in July um, <laughs> that looked okay to me, but uh, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. I moved. Seconded. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, any modifications or amendments to those meetings, minutes? No. If not, all in favor? Uh, Sarah, you need a roll call? Yes, we do. Um, Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Thank you. Um, now we have uh, the notice of intent for storm drain repair. Um, this is the <coughs> Northampton BVW doing work and it's at below dry edge green. I don't know who it's going to summarize for it. We've got a, a lengthy application that we've uh, had before us with a lot of plan sheets and so forth. But uh, who, who's uh, speaking to that? That'd be uh, Nate Russell and myself, Dan Nitchie from GZA. Hi, welcome. Yes. Good evening. Hi, Thank you. And go ahead, uh, apologize, go ahead, Nate. apologize in the, yeah, uh, hopefully people can hear me. I'm coming to you live from the Johnny Appleseed uh, Visitor <laughs> Center on Route 2, <laughs> that'd be in Boston. Um, so, Hopefully you can all hear me, but yes, we're here to, to, to present, uh, describe the project. Uh, the city of Northampton uh, Department of Public Works is proposing to reconstruct an existing stormwater outfall at, that extends from Dryads Green um, through a property owned by Smith College, uh, ultimately discharging to the Mill River. Um, it's, a, it's an existing municipal drainage system that had experienced uh, the stress over the last several years to the point where uh, the pipe broke and was causing erosion of the slope. Uh, I believe about six months ago, maybe almost a year at this point, there may have been an emergency NOI uh, obtained by the city to do some interim stabilization work at the end of Dryad's Green. Um, the intent of this project is to essentially restore the pipe to essentially pre-existing condition. So to dig out the old pipe, install a new drain line and backfill the, the scoured uh, ditch that has occurred as a result of the, uh, the discharge of stormwater from the system onto the slope. Uh, as part of the work, we'll be cleaning out the existing line that extends under, there's a walking path at the toe of slope, which extends under, uh, which extends across the top of the city's sewer interceptor. Um, there's a there's a drain line that actually extends beneath that, and the intent is to clean that as best we can, and try to reestablish that connection for the discharge, um, and install a high flow overflow um, at the toe of slope for large storms, so that during uh, very large events, water can will be slowed down at the bottom of the slope and then discharged across a new stabilized. Uh, section of the path. Um, the project involves partial reconstruction of the drainage system in Dryad's Green itself. 
So there's a, a number of catch basins and manholes uh, towards the end of Drives Green that will be replaced as part of the project and upgraded. Uh, the current system does not uh, provide much treatment. There, there are no deep sumps or hoods is, is our understanding. So the project will replace, I think it's three or four catch basins uh, on that system with new deep sump catch basins with hoods connected offline uh, to, to new manholes. And then again, extending a, a new pipe following the essentially the existing alignment uh, to replace the failed line that, that currently carries water or doesn't carry water from Dryage Green down to the Mill River. Uh, at the end of the project, the intent is to restore the uh, disturbed area on the slope, planting it with uh, with appropriate vegetation. Um, you know, as it's a utility easement, we aren't proposing to install to plant trees, but uh, essentially meadow type vegetation, let natural uh, progression take the course and, and uh, that area will slowly be restored back to you know, something similar to the condition it is today. One of the things as that currently I, proposed. Oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, um, no, I was gonna say it, it has been severely, I mean, it's several this sort of valley that's been eroded down there right. several feet deep, uh, probably five, six feet uh, below what was at one time grade. Um, uh, yep. And uh, so is there going to be a lot of fill needed uh, in doing this? Or are you going to try and somehow <laughs> plant? Uh, the now degraded grade. Yeah, so the intent is to basically remove all the, there are a number of trees that have fallen into the, into the ravine. So the intent would be to go in, remove the dead trees, clean out that hole in the ground, backfill up to what was previously existing grade and install the new pipe in that. So in the same alignment, but obviously higher than what's out there today um and so the, the intent is that at the end of the project it would look functionally from a topographic standpoint what it looked like prior to the the slope issue to the pipe failure and erosion thank you sorry please continue i'm sorry to interrupt oh no 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 worries um and so the intent is all this work would occur from the end of the pipe up gradient so no work is proposed in the, you know, below the bank resource area, no work in the river itself. It's all uh, buffer zone and riverfront area. Um, you know, there is uh, existing degraded and Dan Nietzsche can, can certainly speak better to this than I can, but the, the subject area has existing degraded riverfront. Uh, there's a portion of pavement from dry edge green, which extends into the RA. And then the walking path uh, that extends along the edge of the mill river we believe will be considered uh, degraded as well. It's, uh, right. there's, you know, it's, it's a dirt path, but it's been so compacted over the years that there's no vegetation growing there. Uh, and obviously the ongoing erosion as a result of the water uh, flowing across it has, has led to additional issues. But um, yeah, so we're, we're proposing this project qualifies as a redevelopment under the, uh, under the Wetland Protection Act. And right. <clears throat> And for that particular uh, resource, uh, there's five primary standards for redevelopment. Um, the first standard is essentially you need to make the riverfront better than it is right now. And I think arguably replacing that pipe and stopping the massive erosion within the riverfront area is making the riverfront better and uh, making it stable. Um, so that's th that's our primary um, compliance with, with 58.5a. Um, stormwater management is being done in accordance with the state regulations uh, to the extent it can be under a redevelopment aspect. I mean, uh, we've proposed deep sump catch basin, so that's an improvement, uh, both for the water quality into the riverfront area as well as to the stormwater management system. So that's an improvement there. Um, we're not any closer to the river than existing conditions. Um, there's actually a section of pipe that extends out of the bank. Uh, into uh, sort of over, if you would, it's just a, not very far over the Mill River. Um, that's not where, so that's essentially zero feet is where the first degraded section is, and we're not getting that close. Uh, so that we're meeting that standard. Um, so uh, the 10% with the existing degraded and the proposed work, we're coming in around 10%. 
Um, so there's no additional mitigation that's required. Uh, but again, we are restoring, as Nate said, restoring the slope with vegetation, native vegetation will be planted in there. And then it will be allowed to just naturalize uh, with shrub population and over time trees. But I'm sure since it's a utility right away, the city will probably want to manage those trees out of there and just allow the shrub growth would be my guess. Um, I don't know if they if they have specified a specific intention, Nate, uh, on future maintenance of that slope. No, I, I don't believe there's any proposed specific maintenance plan. I mean, it's a very steep slope. It's a difficult area to get into. Um, I don't know if Greg uh, Greg Newman is on the line today or not, but uh, I'm not aware of any specific intent. They're not planning. There's no intention to mow. <laughs> As far yeah. as maintenance goes, it would just be getting into, you know, that we are installing some new um, drainage manhole structures, one near the top of slope and one near the bottom of slope. The one at the bottom of slope is intended to be an energy dissipator. So with such a steep run coming down, we want to slow the water down before it discharges out. So there will be potentially periodic need to clean those out. And that would be like a vacuum uh, truck or, or, uh, or manual cleaning methods. But that would basically be that would be based on need as opposed to a, a specific frequency for those. Given the steepness of the slope, are you planning to uh, use erosion control blankets uh, take down after you seed? Yes, yes, sir. the The intent is that the slope will be uh, restored, topsoil seeded, and we are proposing a biodegradable. Um, I forget what the term is, Dan, but there's a like a wildlife friendly erosion control blanket that would be right. installed to reduce erosion. So the grid pattern is the... a little bit wider and a little more flexible to allow uh, mammals, typically reptiles, but uh, mammals might get through there and not get hung up in the netting. Right. And it's a fully degradable. It's a, it's not a it's not a plastic product. It's a jute product. Yeah. So fully biodegradable. What kind of equipment is going to be necessary to bring into the construction area? Um, sort of typical heavy civil construction equipment. So we'd be expecting a, a decent sized excavator working on the slope uh, as part of the vegetation clearing and excavation and backfilling efforts. Um, there may be skid steers or small equipment operating down along the, uh, the walking path between the slope and the, and the river. Um, uh, a lot of handwork just given the, the setting, but yes, there will be heavy equipment operated uh, and it will, it will be your, your standard excavators, uh, compaction equipment and uh, end dumps. The intent is that materials that need to be brought to the site will be brought in through Dryads Green and brought down to the work area, the active work zone as needed. Uh, so as of right now, there's no proposed stockpiling of materials except for very localized, you know, as, the, as they are dug. Uh, within the, you know, within the buffer zone, within the riverfront area, um, except potentially at the top of slope, right at the edge of the road. There just isn't room. <laughs> Do you know what the, the corrosion control blankets were or, or to be made of? Are they jute or choir or something of that sort? Uh, I believe, I believe the ones that we have specified on the project are jute. <laughs> Maybe a hundred yards toward the Paradise Pond from this site, maybe a little less. Uh, there was a similar uh, problem where Smith was building that new cluster of dorms um, uh, at the end of uh, uh, Paradise Road, and mm -hmm. uh, that has a uh, an outfall pipe that's above grade, and then interlocking yep. uh, uh, pav pavers. Um, on the uh, footpath with a couple of big boulders in front of the outfall to dissipate um, energy. Is this going to be something similar? How, how, what, what's the comparison from that project? Yeah. So, so from a look standpoint, it will be very similar what you will see on the ground surface. Um, the, the key difference, I think, between that project and this project is there's an existing 12 inch pipe that extends beneath the walking path. And uh, I believe it goes beneath or just, I think it's beneath the sewer interceptor. That's the original outfall. The intent is to clean that pipe and slip line it 
so that during smaller rainfall events, the water stays in that original pathway. It, you know, during a, your, your, your normal little light rain or something else, there's no water on the path from this outfall. But during a larger event, uh, you know, as we get up to like a heavy thunderstorm or, a, you know, a two or a 10 year type return period storm there, that was when water would start to rise up and, and flow across the, uh, the pathway with a similar uh, articulated, I think we call it articulated concrete mattress, you know, that interlocking block. Um, and that would come out through a, through a gravity pipe from that lower drainage structure. And we are showing a, a boulder, you know, a natural boulder head wall or retaining wall. So functionally, it looked very similar, but the intent is that during normal rain events, you won't actually see the water spilling across the walkway. And that, of course, comes with the caveat that that pipe has been silted in since the pipe failed. We're hoping we can clean it. There is the the possibility that if it's not serviceable anymore, there's a concern about doing too much excavation work around the sewer interceptor. Um, mm -hmm. So we may we may have to abandon that pipe and then and that if that's the case then every time it rains water would flow across the path but it'd be no really no no different than what's happening at smith just down the down the path um, this raises a an um an adjacent question that a little way uh, back upstream from this location yes. <laughs> is that place where that big concrete 30 inch plus uh uh, pipe, uh, sewer pipe. Is, That's the uh, sewer interceptor, yeah. All, all exposed, and it gets worse every year, and it's almost deadly on the ice, uh, so that the, because the path is essentially sloped, um, as well as the mm -hmm. pipe being exposed. Any chance right. you could do something about that while you're down there? <laughs> <laughs> that is next. So just write that into the permit. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> so we had con we have had conversations with previous members of the DEP will say that led to that project being made secondary to this project. But the intent is that uh, we're, we're, we're currently working with the city with DPW on a solution to repair that. Oh, nice. How long do you expect the project to take? And I assume you have to work around the wood turtle problem there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so did Natural Sorry, Heritage have a specific time of year restriction, Nate, for this? Yes, I believe they something. did. Yeah, yeah okay. I think they, they had the requirement for a turtle protection plan, and yeah. I believe they had a time of year restriction. So November 1st, um, 30. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the work the work on the slope itself is <clears throat> something that may, you know, I think it's it's not a ton of work. It's just a difficult place to do work. So my expectation is maybe it's a month from start to finish of the work on the slope. Um, and that's not the final stabilization, but you know, once they really get into it and start digging and getting it backfilled, it's gonna behoove the contractor to complete it as quickly as possible because they will have to bypass water around this during the, the work. So right, they can't just let the water continue to run through the trench while they're, uh, while they're replacing the pipe. So, the expectation is it'll be a, a very quick fix to get the pipe repaired and get it backfilled. And then uh, how long it will take to do the work in the street. That's a, that's another question. Um, and it really comes down to the, the contractor's sequencing. Yeah. I think it's the, sl the slope and then the you know, proximity to the river is the more of the commission's concern for work. Right. And so I, my guess I, we, we don't have a contractor selected. They haven't bid the project yet, so I can't say for, with any certainty what the schedule would be. But, you know, my guess is we're looking at a, a, a good month from the time they start clearing that area until they get it backfilled. And, you know, the, again, time will be of the essence to get it back up and running and get it restored so that they can uh, get it vegetated and, and get going. I know this, this DPW is, is very anxious to get this project completed to, to be able to deal with the problem and fix the erosion and, and improve the water quality there. I have a question. Yes, um, sir. 
What happens with winter road salt in the event of a large storm surge? Of a storm surge? Sorry? Or just a big storm event? Yeah. Yeah, okay. a big storm event um, is yeah. this, uh, just washed into the Mill River. Yeah, just like every other catch so basin any, in the city. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, any de-icing what, materials yeah, will yeah. continue to sort of make their way down gradient yeah. as they currently do. Yes, I mean I think it really comes down to a dilution issue: the amount of volume of water per the amount of salt in there. Um, I don't know if anyone's studying that in in the Mill River, but it's it's not really a a topic that's brought up uh, other than by conservation commissions. But in terms of regulated, it doesn't seem to be a regulated item. Okay. <clears throat> It's one that um, we, we sometimes on private developments um, require salt-free snow removal and so forth uh, in mm -hmm. order to provide protection. But um, on the municipal level, we don't really have that leverage, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions from commissioners? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with the project. I was just, I think, um, Mason asked the question about the erosion protection mats because I'd be concerned that you know after you plant it, if you just left it and a good storm came along, no water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't work very yeah. well, would it? No, no. exactly. No, so it, you've, it, you've addressed that. So yeah, there'd be seeds, wood turtles all flowing <laughs> down. <the slope>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had. Uh, I'm good. I had a couple questions. I noted on the plans that um, sort of the, the standard gamut of any type of erosion control necessary was included on the plans, but except for the jute netting, there wasn't anything specified, but given the angle of the slope, it seemed like that wasn't something that should just be left to the contractor and uh, the commission would want to see a detail. Yeah, I, I believe we plans. show, I believe we show a combination of we have perimeter erosion controls at the toe. I believe we show waddles and are similar along at regular intervals um, on the erosion control plan. So the intent is that there would be additional measures installed by the by the contractor as necessary to maintain the slope. All right, I didn't. I wasn't able to find locations. Uh, there were details of the methods themselves, but not the specific locations. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, uh, and I apologize because I don't have the plans in front of me. But I believe on the erosion control plan we show. It's a dashed line type, um, and it's sort of going up the slope at regular intervals. Uh, it would be a road control. I'm sorry, a, a straw, straw waddles or similar is what we're showing. Okay, and so in uh, sort of a terraced format, uh, running perpendicular to the slope. That's yeah, yep. And I, I noted also that there were some trees indicated for tree protection. Um, so, and I know you'd mentioned that this is a utility easement. Um, there, is there any concern about root damage from trees? Uh, I don't think so. The, really what we're talking about as far as excavation goes is simply cleaning up the debris that's in the chasm right now, that's in the ravine, removing the broken pipe and then backfilling. So we're not, there really won't be much in the way of excavation uh, with, in that area where there are trees adjacent, there's going to be excavation for the uh, for the manholes at the ends of dry edge green. But there won't there. I don't believe there's any trees there that are in the line of fire. Um, and at the toe of slope, there's a dead. There's a couple of very large dead trees that will need to come down, uh, just from a safety standpoint. Okay. And did you have a seed mix specified? I wasn't able to locate that. I don't recall if we specified it on the drawings, um, but I believe it was a, a it would be a, a New England uh, Dan. I'm, I'm forgetting the name right now, but New England uh, in the specification. Well, I don't know if we use a wet a mix because it, it's dr it's a dry environment, so it could be you could use no, a tension basin no, the, mix. The, you could use a standard conservation, the conservation mix. Conservation. Yeah. Is there is there a preference in I town? That's I mean, other than native. The, I mean, specs. native definitely, um, and I know natural heritage had a condition to include about that as well. Um, but, you know, whatever would work best for the site. Uh, it's, you know, it's wet currently, but it, because of the broken pipe, but it isn't supposed yeah. to be quite that wet. Uh, right. But just from an invasive species standpoint, right. additional plantings might be needed just to keep that slope from being inundated with bittersweet and all sorts of junk. 
Do they yeah, just... I noticed most of the uh, vegetation listed was invasive species. Yeah. And it would come off the county checklist, right, for vascular plants of Massachusetts. That's what it said. Yep. <laughs> Get that publication. I, I had a related another related question to the wattles. Uh, do you is the straw generally what you use for these? And uh, is there concern about all the you know? There's a lot of often a lot of biodegradable organic matter that is released by straw. Uh, straw is essentially inert. Uh, I mean, it's straw not going is to typical. Um, yeah, it's it's it tends yeah, we... to it tends to release. Um, yeah, it's it's inert in a way, but it does it can release a lot of uh, BOD, and there are other materials that are, are generally considered better. What would you? What other materials? I, I think of like compost tubes being yeah. the next one, but they right. would have a lot more BOD in it because well, there's a really lot more organics in that. If they're stabilized, though, the straw straw sometimes can release a lot of these. Uh, we did a study at UMass looking at different materials uh, a few okay. years back uh, for um, DOT, and uh, straw tended to create a lot. Depending on you know the the, the history of it, can create a lot of uh, BOD. Whereas his, huh. his compost materials, surprisingly, were huh. often better. I would have thought opposite yeah. of that. Yeah, I mean, we I know. we could know, we, could, we could switch it up to using you know compost logs with. With a biodegradable, um, you know, cover. There's a company in Central yeah. Mass that, that does them with burlap. You know, yeah. the outer sheet I mean, is burlap. If, if, I guess my only concern here is that you know, working on a slope, compost tubes are going to be more difficult to install and stake. Um, they also are very difficult to move once they get wet. So, you know, straw wattle is sort of the standard in the industry for a lot of these types of projects. I'm not saying it's better or worse. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's sort of the standard. Uh, there's, and there is certainly is a cost implication as well um, when you go to compost tubes compared to a straw wattle. So while I understand your concern and, and, and mm -hmm. appreciate the comment, something that's definitely worth considering, um, you know, for this project, I think straw wattle makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, we can condition it that a removal would be required at the end right i mean typically any got to remove anyhow yeah yeah they, they tend right. to release but that's right away and um there's after a while there's less um oh okay time. interesting yeah. so we need to get yeah. slightly used comp uh, uh waddles yeah if you could get pre-used model market uh, yeah. I mean, we have a standard condition about straw in the um, in the, the generic conditions, but you know, it, even going to look at it, it's impossible for me to tell what's what's in a tube or whether it's hay or straw or right. you know, where it's come from. Other than the yeah, I mean, we we specify condition. straw, and it's it's you know we we require this contractor to submit certificates, right? So we're getting the basically the manufacturer's certificate certification that it's straw versus hay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Sarah, yeah, any other concerns or questions? Do you mind if I ask? I'm just on audio. Um, this is a member of the public. Public. Uh, we, yes, uh, after after the commissioners have asked the question. So you, you'll be next. Let me just see if there's any other questions coming up first. Anything else from commissioners? No. If not, please uh, uh, say your name, and um, I see it's Casey on the screen. Yes, sorry, I'm on my I'm on my phone. Um, so we're probably with camera. My name My name is Casey Quinn. I live on Harrison, like a, a block or two up from the river. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask about the access to the river path. So when you talked about there being a skid steer down there. I don't think you can really use a skid steer and have the path accessible, but nobody was talking about whether access along the path would be affected. So is that actual pathway going to be closed during this yes. work? What is the plan for that? There is an anticipated temporary closure to the path. Um, we've been talking with Smith College about that. 
and uh, they will, in order to do the work safely, we will need to temporarily close the path in that area. Yes. Could you have a stab at what you mean when you say temporary? Uh, while work is occurring the, in, in that vicinity. So it's, again, it's hard to say specifically without, until we have a contractor on board to set a schedule. Um, but it will be, I would expect, a, a couple of weeks to a month, depending on exactly how they administer the work. And there's an unofficial path going from the river up to the end of Dryad's Green as well. Um, but that uh, yep. that is uh, something that uh, uh, Smith, who, I don't know if it's still there, had a sign that says irregular uh footing or some sign like that use path at own risk I don't know yeah I think it's still there I use I use that path it is a desire line so it'll probably reappear yeah. uh, anyway because right. uh, people use it <laughs> that's right it'll come yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that sign is still is still there yes <laughs> any other questions if not, uh, motion to close. So, well, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I have I have a couple questions here. Sure. Uh, my, my name is not JM. It's John Mitchell. I actually live on Dryad's Green, uh, just a few houses up from the site of the proposed work. And I have used the path, the supposedly unofficial path, although the sign has probably been there by the looks of it for 50 years. Uh, every day since I moved back to Northampton, uh, 30 years after my first visit in 2019, and I use that path every morning and often twice or even three times a day. Has anybody on the commission ever been on that path or been to the I, area? I, I live in it? the neighborhood and I, I use that. Oh, you path do? Okay. Times Great. Yeah. Great. So, can, do you mind if I share a photograph of the ravine? that is supposedly, that is degraded and has some dead trees in it. Does anybody mind if I show just a we picture? We had a of bunch of those the in the day? application. Hmm? I'm sorry? We had a bunch of those in the application. Yeah, but I don't, I, I looked at the application and I looked at the photos. They're, they're not very clear and they're not, I just want to provide a perspective of where the work is being proposed and what the site currently looks like. And then I would also like to talk about the previous work that was done in 2021. Uh, and uh, how that was carried out and what the result of that was on the area. Well, let's stick to uh, the project in front of us for right now. Uh, oh, absolutely. But I think it's germane to the project in front of us that the previous work that was done there was intended as an emergency, supposedly, to stabilize the area in preparation for the current work. And I think the track record of work that was done there is very germane to the conversation tonight. You okay, take your Sarah, that's okay. You, I have a few seconds. I <laughs> this happens all the time. Sarah, can you, you allow uh, a screen share so we can see this photo? Yeah, I want to. Um, oh shit! Yeah, and it's uh, it's just a picture of what the area looks like right now. Okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it should be all set. Okay, let me. Uh, my zoom is too small for me to find there. Share. All right, so this is a picture of the from the bottom, from the river path of the area that is intended to be filled. So as you can see, there are a number of trees in this photograph, including a number that are quite large. Now, I concede that areas of this slope are quite steep, but the fact is it is not a recent occurrence that there is erosion there. And there are large trees that are growing there healthily right now. Uh, some of them appear from the size of them to be 40 to 50 years old. So I was surprised that a couple of years ago, there was a declaration of an emergency situation there that required bypassing conservation regulations in order to get the, done, the work done quickly. Now, the result of that work there was a wooded area similar to this that went all the way up to Dryad's Green at the time. That area was clear cut. 
a number of trees were cut down and there were very large boulders put into place at the top of the ravine. There were some erosion control uh, devices that were put in and there was a large berm about two feet high that was placed dirt across the end of Dryad's Green. Apparent, I don't know why, but apparently in an, a, in an effort to divert or to direct flow of water. Within several weeks after that work was completed, all of the erosion control mechanisms were washed away and the area actually suffered from a more severe period of erosion than I had seen in the year and a half previously to that while I lived at Dryads Green. So I was, honestly, I was furious at the time. They clear cut an area. Now people talked about invasive species. I have photographs of jewelweed, which is a native species flowering there. Uh, fungus, mushrooms that are native to the area, many, many plants. There were animals living in there. There was total disregard for any of that. It was clear cut and grass was planted in its place. So I don't see how the logic behind this current project is moving us towards an effective, constructive, and considerate conservation effort and one that is designed to protect the area rather than to destroy it because it really feels like if the work that was done there previously is any sort of indication, we're headed into a period where we're gonna get a clear cut area, it's gonna be filled with rocks, it's gonna be bulldozers, and it's gonna be a mess. In addition, further, further to this, I also have a comment about how the access, I agree that some work should be done there, but I don't think that the track record is very good on what was done and the quality of that. In addition, some of, the, some of the plan includes access through Dryads Green via Paradise Road. And that's a private road and it goes right by my house. I'm really not in favor of having large trucks going right by my house constantly for however long the work goes on. I'm not sure why the plan includes uh, a strategy to use Smith's roads rather than public roads, but that's another point. My more important point is the, pre the area when work was done previously was wrecked as far as I'm concerned. I have many more photos, but I, we don't have time to go through them. And I have videos, it was wrecked. And I'm really, really concerned that it's just gonna be wrecked further. And I don't know why there was an emergency declared that required bypassing environmental regulations two years ago and why this project is now deemed to be of utmost important beyond you know, as was mentioned earlier, the, 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 the river path needing stabilization for that large sewer pipe. I don't see why this is a priority. It looks to me from that picture like it's been okay for a long, long time. That's it for me. Sorry for the long discourse. Hey, Kevin, you're muted. Thank you. Um... Thanks for your comments and, and your insights. I will add as uh, someone who's lived in the neighborhood for 45 years that um, uh, that particular area of erosion is relatively uh, recent. I can't say exactly how many years ago, but, uh, and has accelerated recently. Um, also, uh, I'll uh, correct the impression that uh, uh, we buy uh, regulations and requirements were bypassed. Um, the Wetlands Act and the Wetlands Ordinance have uh, a lot of requirements that had to be met for the prior project. I assume you're talking about the one that's closer to Paradise Pond um, at the end of uh, Paradise Road there. Um, there were uh, all, all the necessary uh, steps in the process um, uh, have to be followed before we could grant. Um, why this one uh, is on the DPW's uh, list ahead of other things is not within our purview. Um, can't comment on that. Um, the, uh, the, the reality is that it's, uh, there are uh, limits um, to be able to fix a, a, a piece of public infrastructure um, requires some invasion of the, the natural environment. Um, I understand the concern about, oh, if, if, if this is gonna take down a lot of trees unnecessarily and uh, create a wide open grass planted area, um, I, I understand that concern. That's 
that's not the intent. The intent is to have the minimal dis disruption um, and um, to have as much uh, maintenance of the uh, existing okay. environment as possible, res restoration of the natural uh, uh, environment as possible. And that that'll be sometimes take a few years to grow back in, um, but not to uh, uh, not to be a clear cut with a, a lawn um, as you described. So I, I think this is a, a realistic requirement. Uh, we, we can't can't do nothing um, and we're operating within the parameters that we're allowed to operate within. But I thank you for your comments and your insight. <clears throat> Any uh, other comments and uh, questions before we move on and close the hearing? I, I, I just want to follow up on my previous and, and on what you said as follow up. I did a public records request for information about the emergency status that was uh, put into effect uh, in 2021, and I was able to find nothing, no discussion about the work that was planned. And there was an evaluation of the area that was done in the city's uh, assessment of uh, runoff drainage problems that was done in 2019. And I suspect probably earlier, though I don't have evidence for that actually, but I saw evidence that there, the site was known in 2019 and yet there was an emergency situation declared so that the work could proceed in 2021. I haven't seen any evidence in the public records requests that I have done that this was discussed on any sort of official level. I'm sorry, if you can provide evidence of that, I'd love to see it. Um, uh, if I know that the Conservation Commission um, had to approve that work at the time. And so there were commission meetings. Uh, I'm sure there are minutes available. All right, I, I was not made aware of these discussions and I would really appreciate an opportunity to see those discussions if any of those were in writing. Well, there would be minutes from commission meetings. Right, because I was referred to the Department of Public Works for all discussion about this project. Uh, but the permitting, there might be other kinds of permits required as well, and therefore other meetings where there was discussion. But uh, all of the Conservation Commission meetings, like this one, um, uh, do have minutes where things are considered. Uh, uh, and so uh, those are publicly available on the website, on the city's website. Okay. And, and I do want to say I'm not, I, I don't, I, I, I am, I'm upset about this. I'm not antagonistic to the work of the Conservation Commission. I am a big fan. I'm, when I'm not on that path going down the hill to the river, I am up in Sawmill Hills. And Casey, who was on as a friend of mine, I told him all about Sawmill Hills. He loves it. We all love it. We really appreciate the hard work that you've put into that. I just am really, really sensitive about this because this path, I brought my children to this path when we moved to the neighborhood. And I said, look at this wonderful path we have down to the river. Their teens are like, oh yeah, whatever. They both love it now too. So it's really distressing to all of us to think the path, you know the path. It's, I call it the Hobbit path. You have to go under a tree to get to it at the bottom and you walk along and there's all these knobby roots that have just, they seem like they've been exposed for all of time and Frodo Baggins should be sitting somewhere smoking his pipe in the corner there. So it's really upsetting to see like, they're gonna come in and clear out this whole area, the whole area. Oh, that, and I understand that, that, something is going to be done, but I guess it's track record. There should not be a need to disrupt that, uh, that path. And those roots are more exposed every year because uh, all of us go up and down there, but, uh, uh, 25, 30 years ago, the roots were uh, not exposed in the way they are now. Um, so uh, things things do change over time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can I could come up uh, in spite of loving that path and using it frequently. I can come up with arguments why it should not be publicly allowed, um, because it does contribute to uh, water flow and erosion. But that's again that. Uh, not the topic of this meeting. Uh, we're okay. trying to do the best we can with repairing a, uh, a, a damaged piece of city infrastructure with, and at the same time, um, given the rules and the laws of the city ordinance and the State Wetlands Act, um, doing so in a way which creates another improvement. And so 
if the commission now votes to allow this, it will be because we have considered that as representing a net improvement. So again, thank you for your comments and I understand completely. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioners, any other comments or questions before we close the hearing? If not, motion to close, please. Move to close. And a second? Second. Paul seconds. <clears throat> All in favor? Uh, roll call vote needed. Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Uh, we hearing. Are, the hearing is closed. Um, uh, so what do you think? Um, there were a number of conditions that the uh, endangered species folks were going to require. We have all of our standard conditions, which uh, erosion controls and so forth would be in place. There were uh, uh, elements in the plan that were <coughs> going to expect to, to be followed. Sarah, you mentioned um, about the nature of the uh, planting plan. Do we want to have a, a staff review of the planning plan before uh, the planning actually takes place so we can be assured that uh, the, the, the details are um, as we want, or is the idea of a conservation mix good enough? <coughs> Sarah, did you hear that? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if it, you were asking the, me or the commission. Yeah. Um, so in probably just approving the seed mix, whatever it is, making sure it conforms to the um, specification required by natural heritage for native species. And then just, you know, given that the um, larger trees will be retained, probably just some type of ground cover to make sure it's just not all an invasive species mess. Good. Um, and I think uh, I realized when the, uh, uh, the the neighbor was commenting that my assumption has been is that any trees that are uh, sizable and salvageable will the uh, a contractor will be required to make an effort to retain yeah. them. That this is not we're not going into clear cut, uh, yeah. you know, a hundred foot wide swath down the hill here. Yeah, we're and trying to be very and tree protection was specifically called for on the plans as well. Right. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, the only the trees required to make the root safe will be removed. So if they're within the ravine area, or there, like I said, there's, a, there's at least one very large dead tree that will likely come down because of for, for safety. Very good. So with those provisions, any other conditions that we want to add that uh, uh, before we vote? Is, if not, can I get a motion to approve with all of the conditions that we've discussed? So moved. Is that Paul saying that? Yep. Okay, moved by Paul, second? Second. Second by David. Um, any further discussion? If not all in favor? Uh, Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. All right. With that, we can now move into, uh, Sarah, is there, want to do um, an open space acquisition update or move yeah. into the um, session? So, so we can move on later with, with the intent not to return to open session. Uh, just a couple quick updates. We are hoping to close on the 229 acre Pomeroy parcel in the Sawmill Hills either next week or the first week of April, which is wow. really exciting. So that's yeah. more, more news to come about that one. Um, and we're hoping that this will spur an official Friends of Sawmill Hills group. It's sort of been an ad hoc over the years, um, but now that this is such a big area and should be such an exciting draw for people, I'm hoping that we'll have a, a more robust group. Very good, very good. So, uh, Anything else before we go into executive session? Uh, if not, does uh, someone want to make a motion to go into executive session to consider the purchase exchange lease value of real property 
for interest of conservation lands, uh, where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. It's the, the, the basis on which we get to have a, a, an executive session not open to the public. So moved. Second. Moved by Randy, second by Jen. All in favor? Terrell? Right, Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Paul? Yes. All right, unanimous. So uh, if you are still so here now, and not on the commission, I'm going to move you to the, the waiting room. <laughs>